Now, I would like to introduce one of our old scholars, Shannon Stuckey, to share her wonderful achievements and success with us. Hello? Okay, just checking that this was the right microphone that worked. Um, so I'm just um, asking for the slides. Do you just put my hand up to change? Okay. Um, so I have been invited here to talk to you guys tonight because um, almost six years ago now, I was in the same position as um, you students here. So I was ready to move on to that next chapter. So I'm not gonna lie, when starting year 12, I had no idea what I wanted to do um, after high school. So I'd spoken to quite a few of my teachers in year 11 and we tried to keep my options open for um, subjects that I would do in year 12 so that I could kind of go on to whatever I, wanted, whatever I chose to do. So as you can see, these are the subjects that I did um, in year 12. So throughout year 12, I ummed and ahmed for quite a while um, trying to decide what um, career path I wanted to take before I finally decided that I was going to be a forensic scientist specifically a forensic pathologist. However, when I decided this, the UMAT had actually already passed, and um, to be a forensic pathologist, you do need to do the UMAT. So instead of deciding to give up, I said, okay, look, I'll go to uni and I'll do a Bachelor of Health and Medical Sci, and then a year after, I'll transfer into med. So in my first um, year of uni, I actually was really enjoying the Bachelor I decided to do. And I had spoken to quite a few people, and they had mentioned another um, route to go, which was actually a PhD, or which some of you guys may know, um, a doctorate. So because I'm a workaholic, this was actually always something that I had wanted to do. It was on my never-ending bucket list. So I said, before I'd even done the UMAT, look, I think I'm just going to keep with this bachelor's and take the PhD route. Um, so to do your PhD after your bachelor's, you do have to do a one-year research project called um, an honours degree. So in my third year of uni, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do my honours project on. So obviously I had forensics, which um, is what I started uni wanting to do. But then throughout university, I actually really fallen in love um, with neuroscience. So obviously the brain, it's very interesting. Um, so I was kind of at this crossroads. Do I go with what I was originally thinking and do forensic sci, or do I take a leap of faith um, and go and do neuroscience? And in the end, um, I actually decided to do my honours project in neuroscience. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is because I feel like, at least when I was at high school, a lot of the times I was told, you have to know what you're gonna do, you know, you have to have a career pathway set out for yourself. So you're really stressed and trying to figure out what to do, but I want to tell you guys that's just not the case. Pretty much every single one of my friends that I know from high school changed what they were doing in university or changed their career path. Even me, um, anyone who knows me, I'm very crazy organised and like to plan absolutely everything. Um, I changed what I wanted to do. I think the biggest thing to remember when going into university and going into that next step is just don't be afraid to try, first of all, because you're not gonna know if you like something unless you try it. And also, make sure you find something you love. Don't just stick in something because you're afraid to try something else. Make sure you find the thing that you love because at the end of the day, this is what you're gonna be doing for at least a large portion of your life. Um, so we can move on to the next slide now. Um, so I'm currently undertaking my PhD at the University of Adelaide um, in the Translational uh, Neuropathology Lab. So specifically, I'm looking at a post-stroke phenomenon uh, ter termed secondary neurodegeneration. So this is thought to be a prerequisite for post-stroke dementia. Specifically, I look at um, changes in the brain following a stroke in the hopes to um, gain the relevant information needed to develop targeted treatments um, to treat post-stroke dementia. Um, so just an overview of the duties and responsibilities of a PhD student. First, you have aligning methodologies with your um, specific research goals. So what does this mean? So basically, my main research goal is investigating long-term changes in the brain following a stroke. So I have to think, okay, what methodologies am I going to use to be able to look at this? 
And then secondly, um, using a range of investigative tools to acquire information and interpret relevant data. So once you've come up with these methodologies, we have to use them and analyze them to discover which um, of the data is relevant, not just for your specific project, but also for the wider field of research. Because research is ever growing. Um, we don't do the same research as someone else. Um, so we have to make sure that what we're doing fits in with the um, wider research field. And then lastly, we present our findings in written reports and uh, research conferences. So in terms of attributes and skills of a researcher, I came up with these um, three key ones. So commitment is probably the most important one as a researcher. So I am not going to lie, being a researcher is extremely hard and takes a lot of work. So some um, experiments take months to even years to produce any relevant data. Specifically, I started an experiment in October last year and it won't actually finish until October next year. So that's two years working on one experiment. So you have to be really committed to those research goals and work through the ups and downs um, without giving up. Secondly, you have um, adaptiveness. So research changes day by day, experiments don't go to plan, there's new research tools developed to find things that you found in a better way. Um, sometimes you even flip your entire project on its head based on these new findings with the research. So um, it is vital for a researcher to stay vigilant and to be ready to adapt to any situation. And so what goes hand in hand with all of these attributes is interest. So without interest, desire, or a disposition towards your research, you'll find it very hard um, to achieve your goals. You really have, like I mentioned before, you really have to love what you're doing to be able to put your, um, all your hard work into it. Um, so now we're talking about my specific career highlights. Um, so my main one so far is the upcoming publication of a scientific review paper in which I am the first author of. So as I mentioned before, a major part of research um, is presenting uh, your findings, and one way to do this is getting your paper published in a scientific research journal. Um, so to finally, after two years of work, be able to have one of my papers published is actually a huge achievement for me. I've been working on revisions even today, um, so it's finally resubmitted, and fingers crossed it will be published by the end of the year. <laughs> Um, another really interesting and honourable thing I get to do as a part of my laboratory is um, work with research foundations to raise funds um, for research um, sorry, neuroscience research. So specifically, we actually just ran um, a virtual city to bay um, with the neuroscience, uh, Neurosurgical Research Foundation, which you can see us in the photo there, um, to raise funds and we actually raised $5,000 for neuroscience research. And then lastly, I was also very honoured to be given the opportunity to present my research at a major neuroscience conference um, within my first honours year, which is actually very rare for an honours student to be given that opportunity. Um, so just to wind up, these are just some key advice for those of you who are aiming for a career in research or really um, any type of career you can apply these to. So the main one that I have found throughout all of high school and throughout um, university and now my career is ensuring that you have an effective work-life balance. So being a researcher, there is constantly work to be done and so it can sometimes be really hard to put it down and focus on something else. However, the problem with constantly working is that you burn out and the work that you're doing is actually not to the best of your quality. So I find that keeping myself busy with things such as exercise, um, hanging out with um, family and friends, um, and even like vegging on the couch is honestly such an um, important thing that you have to ensure that you're doing. Um, honestly, I give myself a rule when I'm at work, work. When I'm at home, home. I very, very rarely will take it home, even if that means staying at work till 7 p.m. because at least then I know that when I'm at home, that's when I can relax. Um, another one is effective time management. So with multiple different tasks um, to complete, it can get hard to manage. Um, and this is why good time management um, is such a vital skill to have as a researcher. So um, actually every Monday I come into work and I write down a weekly planner. So making sure to prioritize tasks that um, need to be completed and then also um, like timely tasks like meetings. I also find that giving myself due dates, even though there might not be due dates, um, is really important. So um, in a PhD, you don't actually have any assignments to do. It's all just um, 
independent learning and independent work. So I give myself due dates, even if it's on the smallest thing, like writing a paragraph. Okay, I've got three hours free here. I'm gonna make sure within that three hours that paragraph is done. Um, lastly, good communication. So it might not actually seem like it when um, you're spending hours in the lab on your own, um, but good communication is key to being a researcher. So not only do you have to learn to um, interpret, translate complex research findings um, into a compelling research argument, you must also ensure that is, it is in a language that people unfamiliar with your field would understand. So that is why a lot of our time as researchers is um, actually spent networking with other researchers, um, doctors, and even patients um, to ensure that we understand the bigger picture of our research and don't just get stuck in those nitty gritty details. Um, so at the crux of it, um, that is life as a PhD student and my specific journey um, to how I got here. I would say that if you have any questions, feel free to come and see me afterwards. However, um, I do have another commitment I have to run to. So if there was anything you would like to talk to me about, please speak to Ms. Harding and she can get you in contact with me because I would love to um, hear what you guys have to say and if you have any questions about um, research and being a PhD student. So I will now hand it back over and um, thank you guys for inviting me.